Hello. 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 Welcome to Scott Tindall's Home Shop. I'm Scott, and Tara is off at 4-H doing student council, learning about 4-H government and stuff such as that. What I have here is I have let me put my spectacles on. I have the Jurgensen or Jorgensen clamp 1623. It's a tabletop clamp, bench clamp. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it about 10 inches away <coughs> from here. And then I'll put another one down yonder about 10 inches. And that's a lot of times I need to hold down a board on the workbench to route something in the center or to route a groove in the center or to, well, that's the same thing. Right? Anyway, so anyway, here's what I'm going to do. You have to drill two holes. So I have all my tools. I have a pencil, a measuring device, and I want this clamp to be center. So we'll move the vise open for ten and a half inches. Oh, excuse me. Thirty second mark is uh, sixteen thirty seconds is a half inch. All right, so that's about where I want that to be. Now, the thing about this. Alright. Is that I can this I can clamp down a block from here. And if I need to go any further, I will simply push it against the wall. So the first thing we need to do is Drill our hole with a 3 8 bit. It always gets me how on some tools the bit that holds it is bigger than, than what it's driving. It just seems kind of backwards. And so when you need to use it, you just pull it up. And now you can adjust it so that it's a little tighter down than that. I'm going to get the pin that goes through it and make a pin that goes through it. That way you can push against it as well. But you can pop it up and push against it. Now I can clamp. I can clamp this block right here. I can clamp this block. And when I get the pin, I don't have the pin that goes in it. This thing were bought about 30 years ago. Got to drink my cup of coffee here. Hold on. So now, anyway, I can pull up on it. And I can block a block down there. And now I can use this dog on the vise. 
and I can clamp boards. Well, that just worked out to be right at the end of the stroke of the vise. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a piece of quarter inch plate out there in the shop when it warms up and I'll make that bigger because as you can see, tightening up on that give a little bit of rock to my tail. So if I pull it up, get uh if I let it down. We are down here on the other side. And down here I have a two by four that goes across where the saw table is split. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to what's going to be and I'm just going to take this piece of wood out here on the edge of the table and I'll put a little mark on the face and now we know where the edge I'm going to roll that mark up on the top right. now we know where the edge of that 2 before is Alright, so now we need to go back to 10 because I did 10 and a half off the face of the vise over on the other side over there. So now we're going to go right past, we're going to go right beside this. Because this is already screwed down, this will help reinforce it. So what I need to do is that's the end. Let me get y'all angled down. There you go. This line represents the end or the edge of the joist that's going across here. So I want to put my take my mark. Let's find out where my mark's going to be. Right here. Alright. And I want to simply center that on there. And I want to put this right beside that. And then we will put two screws in the deck into that joist. Over there, we're over top of the vise. On the other side, we're on top of the vise. So we can't put a board right where the bolt goes through. We have to put it behind it. Which is all fine. I just showed you that I can tighten down. pulling, Just barely pulling the table, I can't move the block. Anything such that I'll get, I'll have to make on the lathe. I'll have to make a bigger bolt. I'll have to make a longer bolt. Well, Cheers little lathe won't do this. It's just too much flop in it so anyway so the first thing we need to do is we need to see about where the hole is going to be so the hole is going to be right there and so we will measure the the countersink hole first and I can use a prick to get that up I don't have a spoon now alright so now I'm not going to worry about it being so tight to trim. We we'll hardly ever do anything down here. We can adjust it. Bolt goes down from there. That's a little bit of a bump. 
Probably wouldn't be if all that crap wasn't in there. Let me try. Go down just a little bit more. Nice thing about this, you can just keep adjusting it. There. Yeah, so trying to pull that up doesn't do a whole lot of good because, I mean, you're this close, you can just reach up under and push it a lot easier. Now, what I have to do is I have to reach under here, and what y'all can't see is I have to stack all this on one hand, turn it over, well, actually, one nut, and then slide this up there. Uh, bolt got a little burr on the bottom So while we're setting the first one, let's go ahead and get that set Get out of there just See and it just slides right in that little hole You don't want it too tight, but you don't want it to have to start rocking up so that means it's pushing, if it's rocking up, if you have it set to where it comes way up like that, then it's rocking all the way out here on the back. The little gusset don't go out that far. So you want this to actually be relatively snug. You can push it in that way, and when you pull up on it, it doesn't get a chance to rock back. Alright, so while that's there, I'll reach up under here and I will run the lockup bolt on it and now you can get a little bit more depth if you were to use uh um uh, my lock nuts all right there you go and now when you get ready to use just push that up, slide that under. Now she's nice and tight, and I can clamp a block down out here. And you put a pin against it so that you can push against the block. When you put a pin through there, I don't have one to show you. I don't have a gun nail loose, but it allows you to push against the face of this like that. It won't go back any further than that. So now you can push against this whole surface right here. And if you're clever enough, you could weld a piece. With that groove in it right there and have this standing straight up and use it for a push give me just a second here i'm gonna try to reach up under here and do this one-handed i know what y'all are saying where's tara oh well you know if i took this off might be a little bit more helpful like i said tears at 4h oh it's there we go Let me get my block. That just comes right up right quick. And you can put a whole lot of force on that piece. In a New York second. I get to introduce you to another one of my favorite toys. The countersunk drill. The counter, the counter, the, dr the pilot countersink drill bit all in one package. This thing is probably 30 years old, and here it is. 
you run a regular bit in a minute all right that's your stops but you can run it in wherever you want to but I'm running into there now it all depends on what you'll see what I'm talking about so if I run it in there pull this off and that's all I have so you can actually run it out I've run it out to there before depending on how far you need to get it remember now you're not you're not running the screw with this you're not running the screw with that all you're doing with this and this goes in between the fingers of the jaws of the clutch a chuck and you push that down preferably with that up you push that down and then you pull that back okay now here's our line going down the side so we're going to add before it gets out of hand I'm going to add three screws. Now all I got to do is pull that off. A lot of the times I would keep it in my hand. Now that was my dad's, but I used it a bunch. I have the ones where you flip them around, and that's a pain in the butt. That's so much easier. I can drill so many holes so much faster. too deep probably the astute viewer has known but has noticed that I'm in the shop with my shoes off my feet are hurting today from my gout so I am taking it very careful to not and the, the shops just been cleaned and I don't really think that a few bit of fabric on the shoe is going to help a whole lot okay so yes I understand I like to address some things there are some people and I don't and I've deleted the comments not all of them not all of them well, some of them are hurt my feelings and, and some of them are wrong and hurt my feelings and some of them just hurt my feelings so I don't delete the ones that hurt my feelings just the ones that are wrong I may misword something, and then somebody will come in there and chew me a new one over the fact that I misworded it. <clears throat> well, I'm sorry that I misworded it. But yeah, I can get that. Let's see if I can get that with my finger down here. Nope. Yeah, yeah, I can. Ah, oh, come on. There we go. So you hold it up. And you slide it in. It's better for me to pop it up in the bottom. Anyway. So, you know, they see people see me do things. And they're like, oh, you shouldn't do that. Please get safety. Da 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 da. Now, Doug Jackson just put out a video from SV Seeker. I'm not affiliated. Affiliate affiliated with Doug Jackson of SV Seeker in any way. I didn't ask him to put out this video and he didn't ask me to put out mine. Safe, being safe is paramount. But I think that people confuse being safe with being smart. No. It's not the same thing. I can put on a face shield and I can put on eye protection and I can put on a fire sock over my head for fire protection. I have two layers of impact protection and then I turn around and grind right at my face. That's not being smart. Now, here's where you hedge your bet. You put all that stuff on and you stand off to the side of the grinding wheel. You stand off further, depending on if you have better, enough control and can see. The wheel comes apart, like Doug described or uh, demonstrated. The wheel comes apart, and because of its low mass, it flies off within a few feet with very little to no impact whatsoever. This world has become 
a bunch of scaredy cats. Now, I am not advocating people doing stupid crap. I don't let my daughter play with her rifle in the house, even though I know I've unloaded it because it's unloaded. She could, it could get a bullet in it, it could have one in the tube and she not know it, and she could rack it back going through the cycle, of, whatever. Anything could happen. Stupid things can happen. So what you do is it's a balance scale. It's a balance scale. Well, but it's a reverse balance scale. You have stupid things over here. The more stupid things you have right here, it tilts you up and makes you fall into the stupid things. Well, so what you do is you balance it the other way. You balance it with smart things. Running a chainsaw. I see people running chainsaws. They stand right over the right over the chain. The chain comes off, it comes back and catches them in the leg. Now I've had several chains come off. Rainbow Star put out a video. Not a logger, being a joke. Um, <clears throat> people saying that he's not a logger. And people would probably say if I had a big enough channel, they would probably say I'm not a logger too. Am I logger Wade? No. Am I <clears throat> Chris with Let's Dig at 18? No, not him either. But I was grown up. I was raised up using heavy equipment, heavy tools all of my life. I use a chainsaw. I stand off to the side. I don't care how fast I'm going. I stand off to the side because all it takes is that one time. So what I'm saying is, yes, I'm sitting in here in my sock feet, but I'm sitting down, rolled up to the chair. All the power tools are put up, cut off. Safeties are all on them. They're not. They're not on. Miter saw has been unplugged. The red alarm saw has been unplugged. The uh, <clears throat> router table, unless you stuck your finger down in the hole three inches, you're not going to touch anything, even if it did come on. And the drill press is unplugged over there. So, um, don't be so scared to do something. My daughter, I raised my daughter to be so scared to do stuff that, stuff that I know the outcome, stuff that I know is not going to be scary, it's not going to hurt her. I have her almost in fear of certain things because I was ignorant and told her, oh, you have to be safe, safe, safe. No, you have to be smart, smart, smart. Because a batting helmet is safe. And if a pitcher throws a hundred and... 15 mile an hour fastball upside your head enough times over the expectancy of that helmet. Yeah, the helmet will, will help, but it's still going to rattle your brain. Safe or smart, step back off the plate. So that's just my take on that on his video. Um We're trying all right, on a lighter note. Thank you for now. You, now, if you made it this far to the end of the video, you made it this far into the video, then I need y'all to do something. Tira has always been watching Keith Spinner and Keith Rucker and Keith uh, Keith Spinner and Keith Rucker and Adam Booth with me on and Tom Lipton. He's she, she met Tom Lipton, but she wants she wants to meet Keith Spinner. Keith Spinner has sent her tools. Keith Spinner has sent her shirts. Keith Fenner has mentioned her in videos. He would, he would like to meet her. Or she would like to meet her. I imagine he'd like to meet her, meet us too. I never asked him. Um, so, what I want to do is, what we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, get up enough money. We will be donating. Family will be donating. But we need some help. And there will be a link in this video to that. How to, many ways of how to support the channel, but it is coming down to, we, we're trying to get airfare and motel accommodations to uh, Rancho Cucamonga, California. I need to get all this up before I can call Stan and say, hey, put me on the list, I'm coming. Um, we're going to fly out Friday, 
spend all day Saturday out there at stands and then come home Sunday. Come home Sunday afternoon. So there's a bunch of things, logistics that go along with that. Car park, gas, um, checking luggage if it's any bigger than what we what you're allowed. Well, if I buy something out there, this time I'll take it back to UPS and just let them send it home instead of bringing it on the airplane. But then again, I don't want my stuff lost. So, be that as it may, we are trying to come up with that money and we're trying to improve the shop so that we can improve the videos. I have one camera that we work off of and that camera seems to always be in the way and I need to be able to have another camera set up over here so um, I have a few patrons that help out and their money goes to stuff like, believe me or not, their money goes to stuff like buying pencils. Um, I bought a pack of saw blades, one patron endorsement. I bought a pack of clamps, one patron endorsement. Tara bought um, some colored pens for when, she, when we do uh, birdhouses, she colors in the birdhouses around you know just draws on them and then we clear coat over top of it we got two birdhouses that we've made one's a cheap one one's a really nice one um it's just things to operate a hobby shop business and and to do a youtube channel that we need a little bit of help so if you made it to this part of the video yes this part is a very important part please go to the t-shirt links and buy a t-shirt help out the channel. I'm also trying to send Tira to um, 4 H summer camp. Now for those that wonder why I'm asking for help, well I'll tell you why I'm asking for help. My back got injured a while back on a job uh, on a job that didn't have work with time. Wouldn't have done any good. And I wouldn't have I wouldn't have turned it in on the on the owner if I did. I had insurance to pay for it, and, and it, wasn't, it was so long ago, but then I let it go, and then, well, it got worse and worse and worse. I had a disc tear in my lower back, and they had to go in there and fuse the two joints together, spinal fusion, between L3 and L4, or 4 and 5. I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to go look at the pictures and see, count it up. So I don't work. My weight, cholesterol, all that's coming down because I'm working on it, but um, we homeschool Tara, so that in a nutshell is why we make these videos, and people have been gracious to help out. They help out tremendously. Tara has taken apart all of my stuff out there in the shop that, that, that wasn't bolted down or, or put put away. She, it, she it's expanded her her education into tools and how tools work how ratchets work daddy why does a ratchet go click 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 this way and and push hard this way or when you flip the little thing and i take it apart and show it to her because i had one to show her so all of that any contribution to a financial contribution even a even a rousing attaboy in the comments keeps me and Tara out here doing this type of stuff. Helps me fight my depression, helps me fight my anxiety, and helps me keep the shop open. Because a hobby shop is the worst type of shop to have that doesn't make any money. No, it's not your responsibility to pay my bills. That's not what I'm asking. And yes, it could be considered a play on words, but I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna let you be the, the decision make the decision on that I'm asking to help my help me with all these things that I brought up but mainly that uh, if you like this content and want to see more of it then it costs money to do it you go to the movie theater you shell out money to watch a movie you buy peanuts popcorn or a coke and then after then a lot of times people go out to dinner okay but going out to dinner is a necessity you have to eat but, you know, so you watch the movie, you pay for the movie. That goes back, and everybody gets their little fingers on that money. Everybody goes back to production, to, to set design, to costume design, to all the way down 
to renting equipment from rental stores. All everybody gets their money from that. So follow the links down below. I hope this little short video um, was enough to, to to entice you to stick around, stay around there further. I know everybody loves Tira, but if y'all were helping me raise my daughter and helping her watch and watching her grow up, then y'all gonna have to deal with separation anxiety from her not being in the videos just like I have to deal with it. We have gone and gotten, so anyway, follow the instructions. I get off track and I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what makes my videos so bad. So let's take a coffee break. <clears throat> oh, keep a couple of things if you can see up here. Here, come up with this idea mount our pencil sharpener up here and bungee cord it down so that we can one hand now that takes a while well let's just say you know what it does and I won't waste your time sharpening that pencil all the way down but it does do a really good pencil and uh, but now if you got one that just needs touching up see there you go I'm taking a second and if you ever walk in well these are actually all in there upside down the ones that have been sharp if you ever walk in and people wonder why are your pencils upside down well I'm not stupid enough to slam my hand down on it. anyway I digress so follow the links down below if you like these videos and help support the channel. And until next time, see you on the next video. Bye.